is the best tutorial on skin retouching and facial sculpting that you will ever watch on YouTube. However, it is quite long. If you don't have a lot of time and if you're not going to pay attention to this particular video, my advice is, is to save this video and watch it later because I'm going to give you every detail when it comes to skin retouching. I'm going to share with you how we do facial sculpting using burning and dodging so that you create depth within this whole face and a lot more is yet to come. Ride with me and let's roll this. Hi everyone, this is your boy Oscar Tege again with yet another amazing tutorial. So let us kick off this tutorial here. What we're going to do, we're going to do skin retouching on this particular image. Then after we're going to do what we call burning and dodging to create depth within this particular image. I'm going to show you how to perfect this makeup so that it is more flawless and very, very nice. I'm going to show you also how to improve these particular eyelashes. Then I'm also going to show you how to maintain skin texture without making the picture overly smooth. So basically we are going to do a masterpiece out of this image. If you want to follow along, you can click the link in the description below and download this image and follow along. Uh, but before I dive into this video, please take a minute, subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up definitely if you love it. Let me just give you a moment for you to subscribe. Done. I guess you've finished subscribing. If you've not yet subscribed, please just do that and yeah, let's roll. Anyway, we're going to use a technique called fast frequency separation. That is the technique we are going to use. So how, what is frequency separation? Basically what frequency separation is, we are going to separate the textures. When I say textures, I mean the pores, all these lines, the hairs and all that from color. That is what frequency separation is all about. And when I say tones, I mean these greens, the browns, the blacks, the yellows, all those are the tones. So what frequency separation does, we're going to separate the textures, leave them in their own layer and the tones or the colors in their own layers as well. So let us do this. So what you do, you come into the layer panel. Let me just close all this, these panels so that I get a wider screen to work with. All this. Yep. So I'll just use layers. So you come here onto the layers panel, just duplicate this twice, just like that by dragging it there. Then we're going to name the lower layer tones. And then we're going to name the upper layer textures, just like that. So this here is what we're going to do. We're going to come here into the tones layer. We unsee this and then we come into filter. You can't say blah, you say Gaussian blur and then let us first push it back to zero. Now let me take this slow. I need your attention here because I did a video on frequency separation but it seems most of the people mess up at this particular point. This particular point determines how your final image is going to look like. Now I'm going to explain this. Everything that you're going to blur out in this particular layer, every texture you're going to blur out in this particular layer is going to resurface in the texture layer. So for every texture that you want to maintain in the final image, you make sure when you're doing this first blur, it is all blurred out. Now, I want to maintain all these textures in the eye. I want to maintain all these textures on the nose. This is very beautiful texture in my opinion. So I'm going to make sure it is all blurred out. So I'm going to come and I know it is weird to say that uh, the whatever you're going to maintain, you blur it out, but it is going to make sense in a few minutes from now. Just pay maximum attention. Actually get off the computer and just watch me do this. So we're going to come and blur just like that. Actually you look here and you look there as well. So you just come and click, you know, uh, I think that is 
let me just see I'll just zoom it out just a little bit and see I'm going to still blur out so that I see this I don't want you to cram digits yeah I want you to understand how this works because if if you're working with a smaller image definitely it will be lower pixels here if the image still is far away from the camera from the the face is far away from the fruit from the actually the, the pixel distribution of that image how should I say this okay let me rephrase this you know uh, how close or how far the image is from the within the frame is going to determine how much how much blur you give this particular image so in other words if you're using a 20 megapixel camera definitely the blur here will be much much lower but in this particular case i shot this image with a 50 megapixel camera a canon 5 dsr it is quite a big big image so that is why you just have to gauge all this using your eyes so you come and say okay and then you come select the upper layer and then you come here and say image apply image then you come here and then you come and select the tonal layer remember we want to to steal now the texture from this tonal layer and put it all in the texture layer you come and set tones so since we are stealing we are going to come here and say subtract so we are going to come and subtract uh, keep the opacity at 100 keep the scale at 2 and the offset at 128 i fully explained these things in my frequency separation video you can watch it anytime i'll leave the link just in the description or right up there then you say okay and then you come here and say linear light so your image has to look the same as your this actually let me just put this in a group i'll just name these free frequency so your 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 background image is supposed to be similar to this particular group of layers that i've put here now these are this and this the frequency layer and the background image are all the same image the only difference is is that this image has been split into two where we have separated that separated the texture which is this from the colors so we are going to work on all these things on different layers so let us begin you come in here into tones and then we're going to begin working on tones but before we go there let us first work on the texture so we're going to come here into the you create a, a help layer which is a black and white layer and then what you are going to do you just crush the reds and pull them down what this does it brings all the rough textures right on top so that you know what exactly to remove from the texture layer this is just a help layer yeah so i'll just close this this is just a help layer to show us to emphasize the textures that we want to blow out rather to remove so you come here on the upper texture layer and then i usually love using the clone stamp for this but any other tool can really really work you come increase the opacity and flow so i'm just going to just click these out of course with the texture layer selected and just remove all these white heads it like i told you it is really going to take some time but i'm going to make sure your every minute you spend here is really worth it you know that is my goal yeah as we do this subscribe guys subscribe and leave comments below i would want to know what kind of tutorials you guys want and every time you comment really this video helps me it helps actually the channel grow and you know youtube would rank the channel up high and which is really a motivation for me to create more of such amazing tutorials for for you guys my goal is to help you better your craft and also improve your photography business because i know when you 
learn this thing, it is going to finally pay off. Your business is going to grow, you're going because your craft would have got better, you know. So we're removing all this texture. Now, these, these eyelashes are really, I, I don't like this attachment here that comes. So usually I come and clone it away so that I get that seamless transitions, transition from uh, I think I'll do a tutorial on how to really improve makeup and also how to apply makeup if you should do the usual shoots when you don't, where you don't have makeup, I'll show you how to get away with it in case you want to apply makeup on a particular piece. So you don't have to do it all through, but you have to, you know, switch off the black and white layer so that you know exactly what you're doing. You don't want to clone out everything you know if you have time definitely you can clone out all these white heads you see all this fly away here this all this i have a full tutorial also on how to edit hair you can check it out it would really be very very good for you all these white heads you know we don't want to keep by the end of this video you should be good at least at skin retouching and skin and facial sculpting you know those images you look at like in magazines and you feel like you know you want to meet that woman now that is the kind of quality um, I wish for you at his Just remove all these. Let me just see what the black and white layer. So all these white heads. I know it, it takes a lot of time, but uh, I'm going to end it here for the sake of this tutorial. I really don't want it to be so long, but I remove all these white heads because a typical high-end retouch image would take a good four hours if I'm to perfect it. You know, but for the sake of this tutorial, I don't want to overly elongate it. I'm just going to keep it at that. But all these small white heads, I usually remove. You know, anything that makes the image look cheap, I remove. But it all depends on what you're going to use the image for. If it is for a beauty commercial, definitely you you have to perfect it in a particular way. If it is just a normal portrait, of course you have to keep a feel of, reali of realism to it, but for beauty retouching, we usually go slightly overboard because we are selling, we are enticing, and you know, Paul Coelho says beauty is the biggest seducer of man. So in beauty retouching, we usually take it overboard a little not overboard in a way that it, it loses a sense of humanity of reality but uh, it has to look as glamorous as can be hope i'm making sense so i'll keep it at that for the texture layer though a lot of work would be needed but for your image you can go ahead and you know expand it and do more so we're going to work now on the texture layer on the texture layer we're going to use the gaussian blur some people use uh the mixer brush but i prefer using the gaussian blur because it gives me more consistent results and uh, i the, the images comes out come come out more precise as compared to the mixer brush but whatever you prefer it can also work i prefer the gaussian blur because it is really really fast and the amount of precision it gives you is really awesome so i just come and begin selecting you make sure, oops, I'll come and deselect. So you get your lasso tool, change the, the feather here to in between 18 and 35, but I'll keep it at 18 for precision. 
then I'll just come and select in particular phases I just come here and say filter then I come and here I say blah so you just gauge it from here let's take it to zero so you just come and push the blur forward just like that you know when you see the skin tones get even i'm going to take it a bit overboard for the sake of the tutorial you know just like that so you come in the next region so we are going to just press ctrl f just to repeat the filter still select now this press ctrl f we come also here there so the makeup in order to make it smooth you just come and select this whole piece like that and then press ctrl f so that it gets more gradual still you do the same like that so we are going to select this part of the nose as you're selecting make sure you're maintaining the shape of the particular parts you are you know you are selecting i usually avoid uh, over the blurring out the highlights sometimes i don't even touch the highlights you know just like that there don't make sure you don't click away because the next thing we're going to do we're going to do facial sculpting after this you know just like that let me just come and also clean up this just a little bit i know we're working on the face now here we are now we are finished doing our frequency separation but when you look at this particular image right now it really 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 looks flat right now yes to some people some people end at this but it looks very very flat see when you look at the before and you look at the after, we, we have lost a lot of contours within. What we want to do in the facial sculpting, we need to make the nose stand out more. We make the cheekbones also stand out more. And then we are also going to make the forehead also pop and maybe every part that protrudes is going to pop and every part that goes in is going to be deeper that is what we are going to do let me just create a help player just to guide you of what we are exactly we are going to do let me just create that uh, i'll use um this let me use a blue here for the to demonstrate what i'm going to do exactly so just make it hard now this is what we're going to do we're going to burn there we're going to burn at the edges at the edges we're going to burn all this this way then we are going to burn over there over there we're going to burn into that area then we're going to slightly burn over there now when you look at this we are just basically doing a little sculpting of the face so the next thing we are going to do where we are going to dodge i'll use red to demonstrate where i'm going to dodge now we're going to dodge there around this area around the cheekbones basically look at it as a makeup artist doing what they call contouring that is what we are going to do and then right there then you come and also dodge right there just you know those are the various parts you're going to dodge again we are also going to come and burn into the draping so that we get 
a little bit of depth within the whole image. Now, I want you to watch this video till the end because I want us to do to try out some coloring of this image and we see how it comes out. For those of you who will watch it till the end, you're going to get actually that bonus tip. It wasn't meant to be part of the tutorial, but I'm going to show you how I usually do my coloring. Now, let's go into the burning and dodging now, the facial sculpting or the sculpting. Now, here we are. We're going to burn using curves. So how do we do that? So you come here onto the adjustment layers, you say curves. So what you're going to do, you're going to pull this down just like that. You pull it down like that. We're going to name this bun. So you're going to, to press Control I. Control I. Control I. But before we press Control I, let me first take it back. I show you something. Control I. On top of this, we are going to create like a hue, a hue saturation layer just on top right there. And we are going to clip that mask right that and we are going to pump up the saturation just a little bit why are we doing this we are doing this because we want all our shadows to be warm yeah and we are going to do the opposite for the for the highlight i don't know if i'm making sense so let us i've clipped that mask yeah just like that so i'm going to come here and press Control i just to invert it. So that is the band. So the next thing we are going to do, we are going to create another adjustment layer. Just here, we say still curves, and we're going to name this Doge. Yes. So we're going to come here and just pump up the highlight, just like that. So what we are going to do, you're going to come here still create another adjustment layer right on top and say hue saturation you come over the adjustment layer and you clip but but when i say clipping clipping you want this particular effect to affect only the layer that is below it it is the same thing that we did here so you're going to come and clip it here just like that and then you pump down the saturation because we want our highlights to look almost close to white. Making sense? Okay, now this is where I need your maximum attention. Hey, first, hey, hey, first look here. Now, you come and press Control I to invert. So we're going to put these in a group, yeah? By dragging them here. And then we're going to name this group Burn and Doge. Like I told you, I'm going to make sure every minute you spend here is at least worth it. In the comments below, tell me whether you're getting something. Comment with yes, if you are getting something, if you're learning something new. Okay, now, careful here. So we're going to first work on burning. Remember the demo I showed you, the parts I was going to burn and the like? Now, here is, this is what we're going to do. You come get your brush, and then we're going to come and kill the opacity, keep it at 11, and also put the flow down to around 10. Yeah, 11 by 10 is really a good figure. Now, make sure your brush is a soft round brush. And then we're going to come increase it. Then we're going to begin burning. So like I told you, you, bu you first burn the bigger parts as you come down to the nitty gritty details. So we are going to first enclose the face. It's like creating a veneer around the face. So you just come and burn all around so that you emphasize the face. It is just like you bringing the face off the, just like that.
when you burn all around the face, basically you have the center of the face stand out. So this is what we are doing. Let me just show you the before and after. This is the before and that is the after. I'll just push it away and then before, after. So we're going to burn it more. Remember, we are doing just facial sculpting. I'll just burn also these so that we push all that, those things right inside. So the next thing we are going to do, we are now going to burn around these particular dark zones of the eye. So you just come and remember you're using a big brush. What we are doing, we want to have that smoky eye ready. Pop, you know. If you're a makeup artist and you're watching this, I'm guessing you know what a smoky eye is. You may be wondering why I, I choose not to burn the eyebrows. I mean, in my opinion, they look very, very weird if they are black. So I'll just come and also emphasize the mascara just right here so that we remove that particular line that came into play. Now I'll show you the before and after. This is the before and that is the after, the before and after. So the next thing we're going to do, we're now going to do to create what they call a nose contour. Remember, we are sculpting the face and giving it more depth. So you just come and still burn in that straight pattern like that. Basically, you don't have to be the best painter out there to, to know this stuff. It is just really simple, just following the facial patterns. Still, I'll just burn. I'll come here and just emphasize her dimple just a little bit here. So when you look also here, there is a minor shadow that we have to emphasize just there also come and just emphasize these particular jaw lines, the cheekbones and all that. Let us look at the before and after. Before and after. I'll just push it far away for you so that you get to see. Before, after, before. See how we are getting depth in the whole face. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty details of burning and dodging or rather of burning. So you just come here and we just want to emphasize the mascara so that we get that spike of mascara just right there. And then also that. Basically, we just want to, uh, when you look at this, this, this is supposed to be a little dark. So we're just going to come and also emphasize that. So the next thing we are going to do now, we're going to do the dodging. The dodging bit, that is where now we want to make our highlights pop, you know? The, the goal is to create more depth in the face. So you come here and then get still a smaller brush. And then we're going to emphasize the nose contour by just slightly painting over. Still, we are maintaining the same opacity and flow, just like that, the nose highlight. So we come and also emphasize the forehead just a little bit, but this time you use a big brush, just like, like that, you know? Uh, so we're going to dodge the nitty gritty parts of the whole piece. So the, here, the lip highlight, in my other tutorials, uh, I usually explain how to edit this lipstick and the like, but for this, I'm only putting emphasis on those particular details. So let us just put this in a group. Of course, this is not the final product, but let me just come here also and try emphasizing a little bit of the lips just here, maybe because she was given an ombre kind of lip, uh, like just to burn. Let me see. So I'll just put these in a group, like. 
see the before, see the after, see how we have created depth in the whole image. So, like I promised you, the bonus tip. The bonus tip I'm going to show you is uh, the basics of coloring, definitely. So you're going to just come here and we come and say gradient map first. Gradient map, what, by, by using this kind of uh, gradient map, basically you want to create like it's like more of like split toning. Split toning is where you have shadows appearing in a particular color and highlights appearing in a particular color. This particular side represents the shadow zones and this one represents the highlight zones. So I'll just come and click over here and come here and then I usually love my shadows to be in this turquoise kind of uh, Thing. You don't have to copy the color code, but you can just always come and approximate. And I usually keep it around green and green blue. Then highlights. I usually love this milky kind of uh, pink, this particular one right there. You come in here and say, OK. So the next thing you're going to do, you come and change the blending mode to color. Because when you leave it in normal, usually it brings like a haze on top of into the shadows, but we still want, we don't want to lose our contrast. So you come here and say color. So the next thing you do is just come here and reduce the opacity. I don't usually want to take it overboard. I come and reduce the opacity. Nine in between eight and 10, but I'll keep it at nine isn't good enough for me. I don't know whether you're able to see that difference, but. That is the before and that is after. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to go on to selective color. Now in selective color, this is where I help certain colors really pop. Yeah, when I say pop, for example, if I want the yellows to be very bright, I just come here and maybe just come and emphasize the yellows. But for this particular case, we are only going to work on the skin tones. That is why I come here. So I come and the skin tones, uh, I'll just come and increase a little bit of the science and then come here and put in a little bit of magenta. Just a seven is enough. Then for the blacks, depending on how much light an image has, I would either push it forward for more contrasts or push it back if I wanted to. But I want to have at least a little more contrast in the image. So I'll just come and put it at two. That is good enough for me. So the next thing is my favorite, it is curves. So here I just come and, and say curves. So I come onto this create a point at the shadow zone and then pull this down just a little bit. Not so much, just a little. And then come into the highlight zone right here and then pull the highlights just a little bit just to emphasize the facial sculpting. Guys, the last thing, this is really optional and it is a question of test. Uh, I usually come and make certain parts of the image more vibrant than others. This is where I come and say hue, saturation, and then just saturate the whole image just like that. In this particular image, I want to emphasize the makeup and this particular this particular, is it an apron? Is it a top? Yes, let's call it that. So you just come and press Ctrl I to invert the layer. So you just come, zoom this in, get your brush, and then with still the opacity at 10 by 11, you just come and paint white over with a big brush. I love building it up slowly by slowly, you know, so that it doesn't look very, very artificial because when you build it slowly by slowly, why I do this, I just want to give the viewer a point of view, like a a place where to look at that first part they look at when they see an image. So for the outfit, 
since it's an outfit it's not on skin i'll just increase the opacity and flow and then just paint over it just like that like that so the next thing i'm going to do when you look at this color in my opinion i would want this this color in the background to somehow this is optional because the main thing of the course is done of the whole tutorial is done these are just optional things for those of you who have already stayed for this long uh, i will just come here and then get still the hue saturation this time i just want to emphasize that particular teal the color in the background so i'll just come and depending really but i don't want to pump it so much right there and then hmm no, i'm not going to emphasize the eye makeup so much because it will take away a lot from the so I'll just press ctrl i and then just come and paint over with white just right here just to make the image pop more anyway guys that's that for today thank you for watching this video if you've not yet subscribed subscribe to this channel right now if you want to get more and more of such amazing tutorials i hope to see you next time and adios